Okay, this will be the first of two parts to a tutorial. The first one showing you how to format a document in Word, which will basically be how you might apply your topic guide from the field. Um, so you have a topic guide which is derived from your research question. You go out into the field and you apply that. And in the transcription, there are formatting things that you can do that help you to pre-order the data as opposed to the term autocoding which Invivo uses which kind of suggests like you're allowing the computer to code the data for you but you're actually not it's pre-ordering the data to prepare it for coding now let's just imagine to keep this really simple that we have two topics in our topic guide topic one is about time and it has subtopics past present and future although they may not be discussed in that order future may come up first in some interviews and past last that actually doesn't matter and topic two is about attitudes to learning. And again, it has subtopics, previous ex uh, learning experience, beliefs in one one's own abilities, and understanding how to acquire knowledge. But under the second subtopic, you know, when we discuss beliefs in one's own abilities, an unexpected response comes out, which prompts a new question, which we want to include in that general discussion in the coding. So that's our unformatted document. Now the first thing we're going to do is apply heading styles to the major topics. So we're going to make topic 1 and topic 2 a heading style top number 1. The subtopics will be heading 2. So we just click in anywhere in the text. We don't have to highlight it. And we apply the style to the subtopics as they come up. And it really doesn't matter what order they come up in or how long or short the answers were or whether or not they came up at all in some discussions. So we apply those. And I want to demarcate the, the verbatim text used by the researcher and how they frame the question. I want to make that visually different to the response so that if I do a text search, for example, on the word time, I don't get the words used by the researcher. I can, or if I do, I can immediately discount them as just words from the researcher. So I'm going to use not a heading style, but a, a, a textual style called quote, which simply makes the text look different. It, uh, you notice I'm not just indenting the text, I'm using the style, and you'll see why now in one second. So where the researcher talks, we're going to use quote. Now, I'm still not happy with my document. I'm not happy with the line spacing. I can adjust that to one. And the same with the style for quote. I don't want to see spaces between the text. I want to see the topic, the question, and the response. And once I update a style, if I take, for example, I want the topics to be red. And that's heading one. So if I go back to heading one and update that style, all my topics become red. That's why I used heading styles rather than just making it look a particular way. And um, the same applies, for example, to my researchers' words. I want them to look visually different. I want them to be blue. So again, I update my quote style. And now all my researchers' words become blue. So now my document looks how I want it to, and I save it. I do File, Save As. Formatting a document, typical one hour interview, 30 pages. If it takes you more than 15 minutes, you're doing something wrong. Um, I go and I save these onto my desktop, and I call them Interview 1, and Interview 2, and so forth. And then I have them ready for import into Invivo. And when we do the import in a few minutes, you'll see the outcomes of this formatting inside an Invivo when we actually do the auto-coding.